The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger to Technicians Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday. Of course, this is Tuesday to Friday. I hope you had a good weekend. And let's look at the numbers. 111 points up at 20,735. In other words, the 20,000 level that was supposed to be the resistance has been sliced through like a knife through butter. And the chances are now that 21,000 will become very strong resistance. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. Meantime, back at the ranch, the S&P E-mini is up 13.50 at 23.61. I have this as a lay E. Um, I could make other uh, wave counts, but this one is the one, it's either uh, an E or a D, it depends on which way I count it. With, uh, but the most important thing, what I had mentioned to subscribers this morning <clears throat> and over the weekend, was there was a flat stochastic at 95%, and that really is strength. The MACD is still climbing. It's still very good. That's the moving average convergence divergence. And the weekly chart has extended its leg D. The 120-minute chart, I had to move. I didn't realize this. I should have done that uh, over the weekend. I was looking at it, but I forgot to notate it. So that this low that was formed right here, 2336.50, not the 2336.75 level, that's the low which makes this a leg five in the 120-minute chart. So I've got a couple of quest good questions that are, that are pertaining to at this particular point, if one was short something, or if you were looking to short, what would the uh, what would what you would you be doing if you're looking at a short position that went in say middle of uh, <clears throat> middle of March? So let's just do this one at a time. In the Dow, what we're looking at is that there's been the same kind of extension, and uh, this is now a leg E in the Dow, daily Dow chart. It's the way I'm counting, and I don't see any other way to count it. Leg E, E's where, D and E is where you start to get a little cautious, and you've got to be uh, you've got to be careful, but you've got to be looking at the technicals. And, and from this point, I just have to admit that the MACD is, is still expanding. The stochastics at 98 percent. You realize 1.75 percent off 100 percent, which is 100 percent, the only thing you can get to with the uh, stochastic going to the upside and 100 plus minus 100 to the downside. 98.26 means you're almost at the top. But if the if the stochastic remains steady and flat, that's essentially saying, you know what, it doesn't tell you how high you can be go, but it says there's a lot of support, and that's really the key. So uh, with, for the for the, uh, for my subscribers, we 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 did implement a short the other day, uh, based on the S and P, which was taken out for I think a 2.3 2.6 uh, a loss uh, of that position. Um, and the only reason why I didn't want to get too involved on the short side and the indexes is that the stocks that we have are still acting extremely well. We did take something off uh, one of our gold stock gold positions. Um, I think that there's an issue here that the, the dollar is showing a little bit too much strength and the uh, consolidation that we've been anticipating in the in the in the gold it, we'll, we'll look at that in a moment. So let's do this. Dow's up 105, broken trend line resistance, 120 minute chart. Let me just take this down here. This is either a G or a brand new uh, leg to the upside. Most importantly, this is still leg D. And you see that trend line that goes way back. I mean, this is a this is a very lengthy trend line that goes to the high of July of 2007. Actually, it goes even longer than that. And it, it, it was taken out for two months in a row. It's been taken out on the um, the red side, that's the support side, and the green resistance is right here for the month of February. It'll be at 20,950, and we're at 20,732. That's really good action. So within the context of markets, um, so far, as I said to subscribers in the daily, weekly, and monthly charts of the Dow and the S&P, they are still in buy modes in all time frames. Uh, which is really very interesting. So 
Now what we're looking at is the support in the Dow is at 20,479, the nine period moving average that's 300 points away. But the shorter term says that a close below 20,600 to 20,570 says, okay, now be a little careful. Watch that MACD and stochastic real closely. Let's go to the S&P, SBX.X. Here we go. Whoops, what happened there? There we go. Um, leg E as well in the Chapman wave. Remember what we like, look for are Ds. That's where other things can happen. And this is the other thing. So that's extended higher. Very good technicals at 23.63, up 11.84. Uh, that makes the support of the nine period moving average, which it hasn't even touched since like early February um, at 2336. Very important. Here's something else that I'm also looking at. The weekly chart has extended leg D. It's gone beyond all the resistance points of trend lines. I can set a, draw a whole new set, but these are the ones that are most important. Now, what happens in the methodology of uh, for, for me in trend lines, is that very often you get, say, a, a 35 to a 47 degree angle. And then all of a sudden that, that chart shows a breakout to the upside. And now you're looking at something that goes to maybe 65 to 70 percent. And then it breaks out and it goes almost parabolic to the upside. And that's the move that makes me very nervous. I would like to say that that's really what's happening in the monthly chart, but actually the monthly chart is still in leg C with the technical still good. The MACD is improving. It isn't fantastic, but it's really improving. So that says to me that we should see in 2017 even higher prices regardless of when we make our peak C in the Dow and the S&P. All right, let's quickly go through these. The question about question came up, if you were short the QQQ um, uh, or you were thinking of shorting it, what, what parameters would you, and what, what would you be looking for? Well, the MACD is a little bit more extended than the others. 97% in the stochastic. MACD is good, but the, the way the arches are formed and the MACD says there's a real good chance that within three bars, it's going to start to flatten out. Flattening out doesn't mean to say it's going to collapse. So what I would say is the recent, <clears throat> the recent breakout in this very steady move up I, I don't want to talk about it right now. I hope I can remember to talk about it a little later on. It's these little steady candles, these tiny little candles that keep moving up. I always call them, it's like a snail crawling up um, a branch of a tree, um, or actually or a slug or something like it, just steadily moving higher, couldn't care about anything else, not giving a very big high or low. I'll talk about that in a moment. But what I do want to say, these are also extended in the um, daily and the weekly chart. And the monthly chart is about to break really important uh, resistance in leg C. But so far, no signal. What will the signal be? I would have to say a close below the doji low of the 16th. And that would be a 200 and whoops, 128.92. A close below 128.62, the nine period moving average. You can see we're building up a case here to say that the 128.50s is the area to watch. A close below, it says, aha, finally, a choppy, slightly lower highs, lower lows potential is would be unfolding. Now, let me do this if I can grab my other, if I can find it, my other mouse, because this one's doing some jiggling around here. Uh, let's just go on to... Um, I want to go to gold. Gold is down $4 at 1234 Nice little comeback here. I'm a little cautious about gold because of the dollar and the dollar itself. So the gold is up down 4 The uh, dollar right now is up $0.51 cents at 101.46. And I think it is going to take out that previous high. We spoke about that last week of 101.76 for leg D. In the, in the daily chart. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insurance 
industrial and metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. All right, a bunch of questions about the uh, indices right now. Let me just do this. We've got the UUP, which is the uh, power shares, uh, DBUS dollar bull, I think it's called. Uh, I think it's called the dollar bull. Yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the dollar. Um, this UUP trading at 2622 uh, had a long legged doji back in the 3rd of January, and then it produced a channel, a down channel, broke out of it, retested the low over there uh, three days ago, Thursday, I think it was. Oh, today's Tuesday, Friday. Yep, Thursday. And now is trying to get to a leg C above 2626. Now, the real question is. The weekly chart, the weekly chart actually has a peak F. If you look at the dollar uh, DXY, um, it has a G. It made a slightly different 103.65 to 103.63. The UUP didn't. Now, that's very interesting because I was asked a question now. So well, the question was, what do I think the dollar could do? And I'm thinking that the dollar, see, this um, thin little wick over here, peak C, that was made in the 15th of the dollar at 101.76 low. So 101.76 high, 101.00, a round number low. Once we start trading into this level, if the dollar um, <clears throat> trades between, at any point in the next, I would even say continuing overnight, if, if for a four-hour period, it's able to trade, it's at 101.48, but if it's able to get to 101.53 and hold at or above that level for a few hours, say three hours or four hours going using the night as well as a, as a trading vehicle, there's a really good chance that it'll have a pop to the high of 101.76 to go to 101.77 to make leg D, and that'll be very positive in the daily chart because you'll start to all of a sudden get both a U and a V-shaped pattern that suggests that the next highest level of resistance would be the whole candle with the wick and everything of 102.95 from the 11th of January 
Um, I would not immediately say, oh, that's you're going to the top. I'd do exactly the same. We would have to trade at 102.30, 102.40 for a few hours to say now it's got released all that magnetized uh, attraction to the bottom and it wants to go to the top. That's the level. So one at a time, it needs to first clear 101.76. At this particular point, I've still got that H pattern drawn in the weekly chart. MACD is, oh, it's not great. And the stochastic down to 53 percent, trying to flatten out. But and that's an area where it's had a turnaround before. You can see right there that blue line. But if it breaks under it, in other words, at 53 percent, if the stochastic goes to 47 percent, the dollar will make that H pattern and come right back down. This is a very important moment, and I'll explain why. If you go to the euro, here's the E R. <clears throat> the euro. I'm not sure if it took it out. I don't think it did. Five to oh eight, five. Two, five, one. Yeah, the do the euro dollar currency pair. Of course, it has um, a good chunk of dollar in it. Um, as making a peak A minus at this point, it looks like. And the weekly chart. You see, this is the opposite of the dollar chart. In the weekly, the weekly looks like if it, it takes out that low of um, just a few days ago of 1.05208. If it closes under that any day. It'll probably imply that it's going to try to test that candle of the 13th of January um, in the euro of 1.06841, the high, but 1.04533 as a low. And that impacts the monthly chart as well. This is a very important in fact, this is a very important period for a number of reasons because all the work I um, <clears throat> all the work I did over the long weekend, I, I sent out quite a lot of charts to my subscribers. But all of the work really was not what I wanted to send out. I wanted to get a sense of how close am I in my in my key charts and the charts that um, like um, GE, IBM, Triple M, UTX and others. How close am I to seeing some kind of extreme resistance that would turn the prices around, even though the dailies and weeklies were all looking very good? We'll see. For instance, I still have liked steel. We own steel stock. Um, <clears throat> couple of positions in a steel stock. Look, there it is moving towards the upper part of that channel. But what's really interesting about this, it's getting the character more of a new leg B, F slash B, than just uh, an F because the stochastic's holding well and the MACD is good and the SLX, which is the ETF for the steel stock. But it is getting to that resistance now the upside of the weekly chart. So we're watching this club. We have, have positions. So uh, we'll see what happens in this sector. Now, there's another thing in the... Um, in the TLT, what you've got is a move that's down 29 cents at 120.03. What I'd say, the 119s and 121s are going to be very important this week in the TLT. Why? Because if the the TLT, that's the 20-year 20, 20 Treasury bond fund, breaks above 121.20.30, somewhere around there, it's broken the trend line, and it suggests strongly that it's going to try to tackle the high that was made on the, the week of, no, on the February the 8th of 122.27. But if it breaks down, it can't hold 119, then all of a sudden you've got this weekly pattern of the arch. Remember that H pattern, which is the one I'm kind of leaning to, but I have to have evidence. And right now the evidence is saying you're right exactly at 120.04 in the middle of a breakout to the upside of 123.14 and a breakdown to the dump to the weekly chart, breakdown of 116.80. So you don't have to make too many decisions in between. Just let it play out. You have a couple of things that are going on. In terms of the monthly chart of bonds, look how well so far it's held this key, very long-term green dashed rising trend line, Chapman Wave inside track support. That is really important. You see this trading at 115 anytime in the next month or two, and yields are going much higher. Bonds are going to break down. But so far, there's been buying of bonds to keep the support going. We'll see if they can hold. Uh, I, I would be in between. If any, you ask me, would I be going short or would I be going long bonds right now? I would say my, my bias would be to to buy the bond if it broke, the TLT, if it broke 120.70, a small position, and maybe add to it on a big break to the upside, or just do nothing. And I'm not even sure I want to short if it breaks 118.65, the low of the 15th, but that probably would have to be my position. As it stands right now, the technicals are kind of weak, 
but the price is holding up fairly well. That's all I can say. So here's the other thing we want to look at. Uh, we want to look at crude oil, and then we're all set to take other questions. Yeah, look at that break in crude. Remember the trading range between 55s and 51s? Well, here we are, 54.79, except there's a difference. This is the first time I can say, aha, you've looked at a number of bars in the monthly chart on the right after the first arch formation, and you have not broken down. I'm talking about the crude oil continuous contract. And in 54.82, up 1.04. Now, remember the same thing I had said before. Would I be short? Would I be long? And I was saying, you know, I I don't see any, any trade right now because I see the pattern of the yo-yo pattern being a predominating. However, now for the first time, I can say, but wait a minute. If crude oil breaks into the 55 30s. Now, it can't just break. It has to hold into, say, a whole morning session or an after. What it has to hold for a few hours, four hours or so. If it can do that, then all of a sudden I'm looking at this and I say, you know, the wick of the 3rd of January with a high of 56.41, that could start a nice move to the upside. Then you would be tackling leg D above 56.75. So let's go one step at a time. The pattern that's forming in the monthly chart now is way more positive than if it was breaking down below 51. And at 54.70, the month is only got a, exactly a week to go. We're going to watch this real closely because if crude oil breaks to the upside and gets into the 62 area, something else is happening. I'll be right back and we'll talk some stocks as soon as I get back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So I was asked about BBBY, which is Bed Bath & Beyond. Is it now breaking out? 
What I had said before is that that candle, that very ugly gap down candle in Bed Bath and Beyond that was uh, formed, um, and see, it closes uh, just under 46 on the uh, what, uh, 21st or whatever it is of January, oh, December, the very next session. It opens at 44.29 and plunges down to 40.90. Not only is that gap and that candle very important, but the way that BBBY has rallied since it made its low on the 7th of February at 39.09, stochastic had a huge move going from under 20% to where it is now at 84%. The MACD has rallied strongly. It's had a really nice percentage move of two points. <clears throat> but it's a very quick A to B to C, and that always makes me a little bit nervous. And I'm, I'm suggesting that the candle that you got to watch, uh, two candles, 4198, the candle of the 17th of January, and the high it was 4235, <clears throat> the 4th of January. If BBY is able to power, I want it in C, I don't want it in D. It has to be this legs, it has to be by tomorrow. Well, it doesn't have to be by any time. It has to have a higher high tomorrow. Today's high is 41.79. It's trading at 41.47. Um, it needs to climb higher tomorrow and then climb even higher before it even gets to a D because I want to see it not be impacted at all by any market pullback if there is a pullback. I want to see the way it can come out of this and it has to get into the top part of this ugly candle before I can even think of it as being something that has the power in the weekly chart to push into the 4344 area. So I need to see it. And then when it pull, if it does that, and it can put, I don't know if it breaks down here under 40.82 is the nine period moving average, just call it 40.50 in the next three days. This is a, it's, it's a real troublesome thing. If it's, so, 40, uh, 40. A point lower, it's a real problem. A point higher, and it's not not a fantastic thing, but it is a, a much better thing than going down because it says there is enough support being building that it can start to tackle the upside candles. Paul, I hope that helped you. Um, the, the, the real question for me is, would I buy it right now? Would I short it right now? Or would I just step aside? And I have to say, in this particular instance, I need more proof because I think if it's going to have a really big move to the upside, you've got plenty of time. So if you are in it, I just say make some part of your position, make a stop somewhere around 40.75. And if it goes to 40.60, it just has to turn around and go back up again because that's going to be very negative. At this point, I, I would be neutral. The stock is not even an area that I really think I'd want to be in. I hope that helps you. Um, next question was, Bob wants to know about Walmart, WMT. So Walmart had a very big move, a gap up move. It must be news. It must maybe earnings today. Whatever it is, it's at 71.50. It's up 2.13. Leg D, it tried to tackle the high that was made at peak F in the Chapman wave at 72.48 back on the 14th of December. The high today is 72.28, 20 cents lower. And so far, it's holding quite nicely. The real issue with Walmart is what happens in both the weekly and the monthly charts because it would need to climb above 75.19, the high that was made in August of 2016. If it does that, it says, you know what? Retail is kind of coming back in this area. Um, let me just see if I can look at Costco. Costco, I haven't looked at it for a little while. Very nice, steady move up. It's at all-time highs, Costco. Yeah, all-time highs, leg D. Uh, I can even call that a recap, ABC. Uh, yeah. Yep, that's what I'm calling it right now. So um, leg D, a very strong move. That's a good, that's a big positive. Let me look at the RTH so that I'm, I'm talking apples to apples. So that's ABC did the same as Walmart. Gap up to a leg D under the previous peak F high of the 13th. That's the RTH is the S&P um, select. Uh, no, it's the Van Eck Market Vectors Retail ETF. So B... Let's see what happens by Wednesday, tomorrow, Wednesday, by Thursday. Because if this fills most of the gap, that's a problem. But if it holds very well and it can actually go above the high of the 13th of 80.52, that's just, a, what, it's a half a dollar. I mean, should easily do that. That'll be mean something. That'll be legs C in the weekend. That'll be very nice to see. 
We'll have to watch it closely. Next thing, I, I, a question I had about was Home Depot. Home Depot, did that, wasn't that earnings sometime? Yeah, earnings. So it is in a, I'm calling this an E slash nothing. It's just an E. A D in the weekly, E in the daily. It's almost like the other indices, like the key indices. Maybe it's broken out in the monthly F slash A. So let me do this, and I'm just going to say at 144.01, up one, it must have had quite good news. It's giving back some of the gain. If in, by Friday, if, if Home Depot HD trading at 144.04, up 1.04, if it takes out the 142 area support, I'd be a little nervous. That's all I'm going to say right now. If you're long, just stay long. You can raise your stop. I don't know what the, the question might have been just to be looking at it. I'm looking at it. I'm thinking it's a little bit overbought, but the, I haven't got a signal as yet. Uh, Sarah wanted to know about um, City. C is a symbol trading at 60.42. This is a, a little different to some of the other bank stocks. Look, there's a trend line resistance here, but it's bumping up against it. It's trading at 60.41 up for, uh, up. 24 cents. What's really important about this is that the stochastics at 91, the MACD is expanding, the weekly chart says, hey, you could make yourself an arch formation by retesting the candle, the high of 61.63, uh, made the week of January the 6th. So far, so good. I would be a little nervous if Citi, as a uh, representing part of the group, the, the financials, Pull back two points by Friday, close two points low. I'd say, uh oh, it's gone to a, a leg C in the monthly. We're going to have to wait for that leg D. Okay. Um, next question I had was uh, Judy wants new data on consumer concerns about credit card fraud. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. I showed my subscribers over the weekend, was it? Uh, the, the debt figures um, are skyrocketing. The um, delinquency figures are skyrocketing. Um, this is a very interesting period because we've actually we are going to levels that were last seen in 2007, 2008 in some of these areas. So thank you for bringing that up. I will read the article, um, but I can't do it right now, obviously. Uh, oh, oh, wrong person. That wasn't it. There were two things going on. That was new data. Uh, oh, that was just information that I got. Um, so that's, yeah, Julie wants to know about crude oil. So let's go to USO because like a number of people asked me about USO. USC, this, this trading band here, you can actually refine it even more. You can draw the trend lines. I liked it between two and three points. That's really what I like. But it also turns out that it's kind of an expanding wedge formation. So let me make it as simple as possible. My eye says immediately that I can grab that area and say that's the resistance area. And there's no question about it because it has been the resistance area. What's really important is how's the how's the weekly chart? Is it acting up? Is it is it confirming the rally? Well, the, the MACD and the USO, which is the United States Oil Fund, is acting well. It's trading at 11.61, up 21 cents. But what's really important for me is that it gapped up today, the first day of, of a new week. Um, it's 11.45 is a nine period moving average in the weekly chart, 11.42 in the daily. I think we were looking at this the other day and it's sprung away from it. And what's really important is it has the look that says the USO could try to trade in the 11.70s. If it does that, that's very important. Dow's up 56, S&P's up seven. We'll be back. I forgot to show this chart here. The 10 minute made a peak D. I'll be if you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks, we're back. Oh, I'm sorry, Ben. You know, I just, uh, I'm so, I've been looking at all these charts and I got carried away there looking at my uh, emails. I just completely forgot to look down and see right there was Ben talking and wanting to talk about the UUP, I believe. Let me just double check UUP. Uh, yeah. So, if Ben, if you all, uh, I thought I did the UUP, but I'll do it again. UUP is the dollar um, power shares. And I believe it's called the dollar bull. Yeah, that's the DB. Uh, let me just double check here. US dollar bull. That's what it's called. If you look at this chart, oh, I haven't got it full. It used to be notated, but let's just treat it like it is. If you look at this chart right here, you'll see that it broke and held for a little while above the high. It was made March the week of uh, March the 13th. That was a high of 26.50. So it went above, it went to 2683, trading at 2618. And at this particular point, the MACD is good, but not great. The stochastic's weak, trying to turn around. And I, I'm, I'm just going to go back to what I was saying before. Let me put it into the context of patterns here. You see this channel right here. Well, you see the channel that was formed here in the daily? And it's broken out and has come back and used the previous resistance as a support level. That's kind of what we look at when we look at trend lines. So that's the same thing in the weekly. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying the dollar, if the dollar is, I said before, the dollar needs to, if it's going to climb, it needs to hold above 150. Isn't that what I said? I think, yes, it has to hold above 101.50s at least for a few hours anytime from now into tomorrow morning. And if it does that, I will see a, it should have a very quick move to 101.77 for leg D. That would take the UUP trading at 26.18. It's a little different. It's always lagging. It's it's the best vehicle we've got. It isn't always really great, but it's, it's okay. So the UUP trading at 26.18, what I want to see is a close towards the middle part of this candle, today's candle. I wanted to get back to 26.23. Two cents above the open, and that'll say, "Great! Now, if you can get to the high bar that you made today of 26.25, that's going to be really important because it's going to help it tackle the top of the candle of the 15th, which is 26.26. So this is a really important period for the dollar." Canon, Kansas City, how are you? Good, Basil. Thanks for taking my call. And how are you this morning? I'm very well. 
Uh, I'd like to talk to you and get your thoughts on Freddie May and, and Fannie Mae, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Uh, how does inter- interest rates affect them? And I, I see they're both taking a big hit this morning. I'm wondering if it would be a buying opportunity. So g- give me the symbols because for some reason I it used to be FNM and now it's changed and I just for the life of me can't remember right now. It's FMCC. And the other one is uh, FNMA. Wow. FMCC is down 1.4650. That doesn't sound like very much, except if you're looking at a stock that's trading at 2.5250. It is down 35% in one day. Right. Wow. And this is one of the biggest moves it's had in a long time because the last big slide was... uh, yeah, this is big. The last so I, really big slide was back in November of 2007, and then after, and then it kept going down. But I'm just talking about these big downshift. And then the last, it was one back in June of 2013. Let's see with the months and uh, September of 2014. And after each one, it kept going down a little bit to a lot. Whoa! So this is telling us federal home loan mortgage. I don't remember what the majority holdings are anymore because it changed and now I could I just are they holding what what debt are they holding is that student what what are they holding Well I don't know they made a big this I read on the internet that they made a big payment to the treasury of 5.5 billion uh-huh. and I don't I I guess they do that ever so often. I don't. I don't quite understand. I just wanted to get some insight from you and wonder if that would be a buy at this time. So yeah, you know, I, I would like to know what they were holding because if it's say student debt, I don't know which debt it is that they're holding. It used to be that it was home loan, but then there was a modification. So I maybe want someone in the den knows more about it. Um, I, all I can say is that this is a very ugly chart. It's under the daily 200-period moving average. Uh, and Peter in, in, from Park City in the den says auto. You know, it's called home loan mortgage, but there's been variations of what all these different institutions can do. It's not really an institution. Well, it's kind of like an institution, what they can hold. So I, you know what? Let me do a little, uh, let me do a little thinking about it. But chart-wise, all I can say is you would like to think that this is just an isolated event and that it should rebound very strongly. <clears throat> I'm saying to you, something's going on out of the blue on a Tuesday after a long weekend. Fannies and Freddies tumbled by over 30% after a federal appeals court upheld a ruling that barred hedge funds from suing to overturn the U.S. government's 2012 decision to capture billions of dollars in the profits generated by the mortgage guarantors. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac after their bailout of FNMA home mortgages only. See, I'm getting, I'm getting some contrary indicators here. Um, yeah. You know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say we need to know a little bit more about it. Catching a, you know, a, 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 a goofy golf in the den, you say, don't catch a falling knife unless you've got your special metal gloves that he'll sell you. <laughs> and I, I, I don't have those gloves. I'm just going to say I wouldn't even – this could be – you see, the reason why I'm saying to you I wouldn't even take a chance because even if it bounced is that at $3 at $2.64, it just needs to fall a little bit more. And it's very hard unless you're having a lot of shares to tell how much you're losing. But you're going to be losing a ton, you know, because every yeah. little every little uh, uh, point, point, even less than a penny – it's going to be a lot of money. So let me yeah. just say to you, let me let me see if I can find out a little bit more. But I'm going to reckon, looking at the chart, I would just say, stay away for now. If something can have this kind of an impact, you don't want to be on this on the receiving end. If there's follow through downside, and if it does bounce really strongly, you know you've missed opportunity. But I don't know if I want to be stuck in this if there's a problem. So for now, I'm just going to say. I, I wouldn't be looking at it. It's interesting, and I'm pleased that you pointed it out. But, uh, I mean, uh, court rules, hedge funds can't sue. I'm not even sure how. I'm not sure how this is. It's a very roundabout way. It's a I'm 
I'm nervous. I wouldn't do anything yeah. there. Okay, well, it's, it's starting to come back a little bit now, too. So, well, thanks for the info. Yeah, well, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm yeah. saying. If I knew just a little bit more about some of the some of the the implications, then I could say, hey, you know what? Between two dollars and forty cents and two dollars seventy cents, at least it will stay stable. But it should actually balance. I can't say that because I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just but, stay away for now. <laughs> all right, Basil. Have a good right, day. Thanks for well, calling thank again. You. Always good to hear from you. So, mm, folks, bye -bye. this is very interesting. Bye. So what we're doing here is, see, the market is having every opportunity to, to pull back very sharply. Even this news here with Fannie Mae, under other circumstances at different times, a 31% pullback in something as important as federal home loan mortgages, there would be an impact in the market that would be very negative. There is some stability here that is suggesting to me that we've got to look a little deeper and I'll cover that when we get back straight off to the break. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to Trade Options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Think or swim. Next on TFNN. Hi, folks. We're back. So um, this is going to be the last segment of the day. I'll be back uh, later on with uh, Tom. But in the meantime, back to the ranch. This is what I want you to do. I want you to look at um, something as important as the volatility index. The volatility index is actually holding pretty. It's up 38 cents at 11.87. There is buying going on it hasn't impacted the market yet and what i need to look at and assess and everyone else i guess is will there be one more move to the upside in the general market that essentially knocks the vix down one more time 
And this time it doesn't take out the low, and maybe it even makes a slightly higher low than the low it was made on the 10th of 10.55. It's trading at 11.87 up 38 cents right now. And I can draw a trend line in, and I'm just going to say that for my purposes right now, and I would like to trade the VIX. You see, February is supposed to be a terrible month, one of the one of the worst historically. And look what we've done. Spectacular move. I'm looking at this and I'm suggesting that I I will be much more comfortable talking about a market that has the potential to start a really choppy lower lows and lower highs phase if I can see that the market is impacted by a rallying volatility index. And so far, that's not been the case. And I know that there have been reports and, and stories that you've read that says the VIX doesn't. VIX works. It's the timing of it that is so important. When you hit it right, uh, it just moves from, uh, look at this, how quickly it went from 10.30 on the 27th, two days later on the 31st, it's at 12.99. It's two points. That's a big percentage gain. So I'm looking at this and I'm suggesting that within the context of the volatility index, if you do use it, my thinking is here that the volatility index has to rally and hold now the new level is above 12.86 to start leg C, the high of the 16th, it, to hold there as the market turns around and you've got to see failure patterns that takes the Dow down 80, the S&P down 11, and that has to accelerate to the downside by the close. So when we're looking at something as important as the barometer, you know, the new cars that don't have all those gadgets that used to be on some of the older cars, they have new gadgets. But it used to be that you looked at your uh, rev counter or you looked at your your hot or cold. That was the uh, the temperature gauge. And unfortunately, the problem was when it was finally showing hot you already saw steam coming out of the uh, the front of the car. What we're looking at here is our little barometer is just saying, hey, I'm, I'm starting to rise, but there's nothing really to worry about at this particular point because I'm not affecting the driving conditions. I am sure that if the volatility index starts to climb into the 13s and holes, it's not done that it did it just once in the past uh, month, more than month, two months. Only wants to go to 13.28 on the 19th of January, then pull right back down to the tens. So I'm suggesting to you that if you do use the volatility index, watch closely. A push into the 13s that holds into the close. We haven't had anything going to the high of the day into the close. The VIX closes at its high of the day, and I'm looking at it and saying in the 13s. That's where we're going to get a, a, a move to the downside. That's going to have to be a systemic move because let me show you something very interesting as we go to the final minute. We're looking at the stochastic at 97.83%. To, to start to get any signal at all, I need to see a close in the Dow two out of three days under the 20,479 period moving average with the stochastic under 80%. How do you do that? It's going to take a little while to do or just one horrible day. I don't see that right now. So the bias right now is just to say, be a little careful on the short side. It could be individually, but that's what's us real close. And we were in leg E. So who knows what the news will be in the next day. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll see you this Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today.
This is TFNN.